an important finding that I think is undervalued in terms of its big picture implications has to do with the emotion of awe, which is something that I've been studying for several years, so people often ask what awe is. It's not, it's not what you feel when you see kittens and puppies. Awe, that's not, that's not what I mean. It's the feeling that you get when you see the Grand Canyon for the first time, or when you um, are climbing a, a mountain during a hike and you get to a point where you see this exquisite panoramic view for the first time. It can be nature, it can be art. Sometimes you see an extraordinary piece of art or hear an extraordinary piece of music for the first time and it shatters your expectations. It, it does not lend itself to easy classification in anything that you've seen before and it, it just automatically stops us in our tracks. I like to say that it evokes mindfulness from us, except that where mindfulness is something you have to work at, you really have to practice and concentrate on it for a very long time. This is like a state of mindfulness that's evoked from the outside in a very automatic way. And we think species typical way, that this is a characteristic that humans have around the world. Um, and it's certainly something that you can see in culture. All cultures create Places. They honor places that are awe-evoking. They create uh, buildings and artistic products that evoke that, that are sort of tailored to evoke this emotion from us. Um, so that's additional evidence that this is something that's very typical of the human species. So I often say that when researchers talk about emotion, and I am fundamentally an emotion researcher or an affective scientist, they often talk about emotions that help us avoid threat, particularly physical threat. So lots of emotion researchers talk about fear and the notion that fear helps us escape physical danger. Or they talk about anger and the idea that anger helps us to resist a situation where someone's trying to insult us or take something away from us, whether it's a material something or our reputation. Um, talk about disgust as an emotion that we feel when we are at risk of contamination of some kind and we need to get this contaminating substance out of the body and when you have that conversation it's very easy to talk about emotions as fundamental and necessary for human survival and then you get to something like awe and it's like well that's nice <laughs> you know it's sure I guess it's pleasant but it's like the luxury of emotion I've I've called it the Gucci handbag of emotions, right? It's great if you have it, but it's not like you really need it. And I think that that is a profound error in how we value the different benefits that emotion can provide. And some of our research suggests that what awe does to us is partly behavioral. As I said, it really stops us in our tracks and even reduces the influence of the fight-flight nervous system on cardiac activity, on the heart. But it also alters how we process information. And we're still digging into the exact mental mechanisms of, of what's going on here. But it seems to promote taking in information in a relatively unbiased way. Um, being somewhat less influenced by our expectations, the tendency to see what we expect to see, what we want to see in the environment around us, and focus more on, on collecting information about what's actually there, which makes sense. If you're faced with a stimulus that violates your expectations, the last thing you want to do is just go, oh, I've seen that before, all sounds good. Instead, it appears that, that certain cognitive mechanisms kick in in response to those stimuli that really promote this drastic, sponge-like intake of information. And I think that may be not only pleasant, but vital to who we are as a species, that we have a positive emotion, a pleasant emotion that we can experience that's not just about material or social reward.